Hey listeners, are you a graphic designer, illustrator, or just creative person? Are you emerging, a student, looking for tips and tricks, or inspirational stories from other designers, or are you just trying to figure out if everybody else out there is having the same problems as you are and you want to find the answers? Well, you are in the right place. Keep on listening. Hey everyone, this is the Creative Calling Podcast with your host, Brianna Christine Gibson, designer and illustrator, and today I brought on one of my good friends, Caleb Arnold, and Caleb and I are both emerging designers, and we just wanted to talk about what it's like to be an emerging designer, things that we find that are working for us, things that we find are challenging to us, and we just wanted to invite you all in to hear our conversation. So, hey, Caleb, what's up? Uh, not much. Thank you for having me on here. I'm excited to be here. Me too. All right. So the other day I went to a panel for uh, art and design career day back at my old school. And they gave us like a bunch of questions that I'm assuming that they thought that designers would have, um, student designers would have getting into the career, and so Caleb and I are going to answer kind of what we think that these, the answers to these questions might be. So, here's one that I really liked. This question is, can you briefly describe how and why you chose your career? So, Caleb, why did you pick design? I picked design, um... Mainly because back when I was um, at a junior college, at Chafee College, um, I was trying to discover what I wanted to do um, as a career. And at the time, I was considering photography. I was taking photography classes. Um, And then I happened to stumble upon a graphic design class that would meet a requirement. And so I happened to take it. And I just really liked the programs, and I really liked the idea that like pretty much I can like there's endless possibilities that I can you know create anything that I want from from these programs and so the more I played around with it the more I I enjoyed doing it and then I just kind of picked my major from there and now here I am wow I don't think I actually knew that you picked graphic design from a photography class because I know you also like comics uh yeah um at the, I had taken a couple of photography classes back in high school as well, um, mm-hmm. and like I won an award, and so I was like, oh, I was like, well, you know, if I'm good at it, I was like, maybe I should just do it. But like, I was never, never really something I enjoyed doing. Like, I mean, I enjoyed doing it, but I, like, I didn't see myself as doing it as a career, mm-hmm. I guess. And so, but I was just taking classes in college because I didn't know what else to do. And then, yeah, I happened to stumble upon the craft design class that way. Yeah, I know what you mean. I also was into photography when I was younger, but I didn't see myself doing that. I got into design because I always liked drawing, and I think um, that was a similar consensus among the other panelists that I was with at the career day. And um, But I also said that part of, I think, what drove me to pursue it even harder was the fact that, like, people said I couldn't do it. <laughs> so even though I already wanted to do it, it was almost like I had to prove to everybody else that I could do it. Um, <laughs> but that's also part of the reason why I majored in business and marketing, because I know that if you're going to make money in design and art, that, like, you at least have to know how to market yourself, whether or not you're trying to get into freelance like me and trying to work entirely from home or whether or not you're trying to work for a company, you have to know how to sell yourself um, in an interview or to a client. So that's part of the reason why I've studied things like customer relationships, marketing and business. So it's been an interesting path. Let's look at what else we have here. 
What skills do you think are especially important in your business dealings or maybe for you, for your design dealings? Um, I mean, there's quite a few skills you need. I mean, one, you need to, you need to be able to communicate efficiently um, because without like, without being able to discuss what you do to other people or even communicate your ideas, then it'd be really hard to make it as a graphic designer. Um, so definitely having like people skills is very important. Um, obviously the design skills themselves are also equally important. Um, uh, knowing, knowing some marketing um, is a very helpful thing because a lot of graphic designers in the industry, they work with the marketing team or mm-hmm. even sometimes do the marketing themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'd definitely say having some background and some knowledge of like marketing um, techniques is would also be very beneficial. Um, also in today's world with the rise of um, apps on your phone and just websites in general, um, knowing how to knowing how to build websites or knowing how to build um, applications would be uh, would be a very very important skill to have. Um, I like so, yeah, that. I mean, You're pretty those... much covering like all the bases and that's cool. <laughs> that's cool because it is, you know, it is good in some ways to be a jack of all trades. I wrote that, um, well, I, I actually, my first podcast was about this, that the number one thing that I believe people should have is customer service and good relationships. It sounds kind of like, <laughs> why does that matter in design? And I don't think that the other panelists actually agreed with me on this point, but I just know that for myself that I'm not like the best designer. I started freelancing like right away after my first graphic design class. So obviously my technical knowledge was low and my design skill level was low, but because like I could put myself out there and I was like nice enough to like get work, then I was able to I was able to get the work, but because like I, at the time, was also kind of immature in my customer service, nobody was ever referring me. And um, I, th- although you could say that's partly because of the technical skill, I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that I, I just didn't really maintain good relationships with people. I made it all about me. I made it all about my portfolio and how much I wanted to get paid. And and I think when you have like that sense of entitlement as a designer and you're not there to serve the other person, they just see you as like another, I can't tell you how many clients I've worked with that they're like, my designer flaked on me or they didn't follow through on what they said they were gonna do. And I think the reason why that happens is because as designers, we're like, cool, a client. We get so excited and we're like, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna work for you and we're gonna do the best job ever. And then they realize that the client wants them to do like all these things that they don't want to do. And then they're like, oh, wait, this is nothing what I was expected. And then they just quit because they're like, well, you weren't going to pay me enough anyway. So that's a justification for me to get out. Well, yeah, that's um, that. Yeah, definitely having to communication. That's why it's also the first thing that popped into my mind is your answer as well is that, yeah, definitely being able to communicate with others and being able to build those relationships with your clients and stuff like that is probably the most important aspect um, of graphic design. Um, and uh, I had a I had a graphic design um, job interview actually uh, just last week, and um, they were one of the questions in the interview was like, well, you know, sometimes. Um, Sometimes uh, the work that we do, like it was for the job, was for like a like a plaque and trophy maker um, company, and mm-hmm. like I would be like I'd be taking like some of the plaques and stuff, and like making it look like um, like the names, like how, how the customers would want the trophy and plaque to look, pretty much. Okay. Um, and so they're like, you know, sometimes they're their, their um, instructions on what they want on their plaque or trophy is very vague. And then they get upset when we do it wrong. Mm. And so they're like, you know, how would, you know, like, like sometimes, it, you know, like how would you respond? Cause you know, you could get a, a lot of angry people, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. about your design work. And I was just like, well, I was like, that's just, you know, 
that's just the design industry. I'm like, you know, sometimes, you know, we don't, we don't do it exactly the way they have envisioned, but I'm like, you know, you just gotta like, you know, go back and forth a little bit. And so I guess the main point of that whole story was that even designers are looking for people who can resolve issues and complications like that mm. through communication. Right. Because, you know, it's inevitable in pretty much any, any industry, really, but especially in the graphic design industry, you have to be able to maintain customer loyalty through, like, you know, communication and helping them understand, like, what you did and how you can fix it and how you can, how you can you know, make it more of how they wanted it, pretty much. Right. I think if I were going to answer that question in an interview is, first of all, I would try to make sure that I get as much information as possible up front to make sure that uh, I'm making it as close to what they want as possible. But in the case where something still didn't get communicated correctly, I would probably stay as calm as possible and try to make it what that person envisioned because ultimately when you go back and you take the time and you calmly at least make it for them once over again and it's closer to what they were expecting, then they're more likely to come back and reuse your business because you tried for them. Of course, I understand that there's some people that are just freaking crazy and you can't make them happy because, well, you work at Target and I worked at Applebee's and you know that there's just some people where you could do it for them like five or six times and they're never going to be happy, in which case those are not the clients worth saving, but it is, I think it is worth it to redesign it at least once for them. Is that kind oh, yeah, of the exactly, direction yeah. that you guys were talking? Yeah, um, yeah, that's pretty much what I said. I told them of some of my experiences um, at Target handling um, upset um, guests and stuff like that. And yeah, I, pretty much, I almost said exactly what you said. I was nice. like, yeah, you just have to maintain a, a calm tone like you can't. You can't aggravate the situation any further because that won't help anything. Mm -hmm. And then I was just like, you know, you can't take anything personally. Yeah. Um, because, you know, if they're just having a bad day and just don't have anyone else to take it out on, I was like, it couldn't have been anything that I did personally. And so I'm like, sometimes you just have to let things go and, you know, just try to, you know, just try to make it right because at the end of the day, they are the ones paying for the product. So right. I'm like, I would just try my best to make it best, the best way that I can for them and try to, you know, to try to correct the things that they were unhappy about because they're going to be the ones paying for it. And so I'm like, it should be perfect for them because it's a service that we're providing. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that's, I pretty much, yeah, it touched on the exact same things that you just said. Yeah. I mean, really, when you feel like somebody goes so far out of your way for you, you, I don't know about you, but I just want to tell everybody about how awesome my experiences are like when I went to FedEx the other day I got some like postcards printed for the this podcast to promote it at the panel and I called Staples and oh, I was so frustrated because you know how designers are like they do things like last minute <laughs> I like was seriously finishing this design at like 4 p.m and Staples closed at 6 p.m <laughs> They were like, oh, if you get your your order in two hours before we, um, before, like, we might be able to print it in time. I was, like, calling Staples, please, please print my thing. And usually Staples is pretty good. I, I almost always go to Staples for printing. And what for whatever reason, this guy was like, uh, sorry, your order is going to take all four hours and we're not going to be able to give it to you. And I'm telling you, the panel was the next day. I was like... Oh my gosh, I have to go. I was like, somebody's got to be open past six on a Sunday. I call FedEx and I'm like, please, please print my thing. And they were like, oh, sure. And I'm thinking they're going to be open until nine o'clock. So I'm thinking that that's why they're telling me that they can do it for me. And this girl is just like, yeah, how many do you want? What kind of paper do you want it on? It turned out that they had better paper anyway then staples and all that and she printed it in a half an hour and they closed at six two and when I got there it was like already rubber banded and she was like hey Brianna like she already knew because I called her like four times <laughs> about the order and <laughs> it was, I didn't even know uh I didn't know FedEx like printed stuff yeah like well that. they you know they bought out like Kinko's so uh -huh. they have like these printing centers and I, I did not know that. Like, yeah. that would have been, like, the last place I ever would have thought of, like, oh, it's, like, 
if I need a package delivered, sure. But I mean, I right. wouldn't think. No, they I, have printing services. I need to go so. get my stuff. There you go. I'm, Free I'm advertising check them out for because FedEx. I'm, on, I'm yeah. unhappy with uh, some of the printing services that I've been to lately. So I might, uh, I might try them out. No, and see. their quality was. But one of the reasons why I called her like four times is because it's kind of expensive and I was kind of like because oh, at first she told me it was going to be a hundred dollars to print a hundred cards and I was like hold on Staples told me it was going to be freaking fifty dollars to print 200 and you're telling me that it's going to be 100 to print 100 like why did that happen are you guys trying to hustle me is this because I'm trying to get it in like 30 minutes before you close or what and um it turned out that the girl like didn't think and she didn't like think to put four on one sheet so she was thinking that it was going to take more paper and so we fixed it and so you know so I'm not saying like you have to have perfect customer service but what I am saying is you know I was really impressed that she got it done like like we got off the phone there's like a half an hour until six she's like yeah just come by it'll be ready when you get here and it was trimmed everything perfect beautiful and I was just really impressed Okay, so what classes and courses did you find most helpful in your education? Well, obviously, like, I've t I took, like, introductory classes to, like, all the different, like, design programs. So, I mean, that's a given because, you know, you need to know how to be able to work the programs. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, beyond, like, that, beyond, like, the basics of that, um, I would say one of the most, um, one of the most helpful classes I took was mainly just because of the professor, not necessarily because of the content, but it was um, but it was a branding class um, taught by uh, Brian Boskill, and um, the reason why it was so helpful is because like I would talk with him a lot after class and even sometimes even during class um, just about like stuff, and he would go off on like tangents about like all the experience that he's had yeah. and stuff like that, and like he he taught me a lot about like the design industry and. Just, you know, just taught me so much about, like, things that you can do as a designer and things that you can't do as a designer. And so I felt like that was the most beneficial um, because, like, you know, you learn, like, almost like secrets of the trade that aren't, like, in within the structure of the courses. And so I thought that was very helpful. Yeah. Of course, all the design classes are super helpful. And something the panelists were talking about is business writing. And it's funny that they all said that because that's exactly what I had written down before I heard their responses is business writing was a really helpful class for me because it taught me how to write emails better and be more concise and to the point. Uh, and just to be better at checking my grammar and my punctuation because sometimes clients will have you write copy and so it's really important to be able to catch those grammar mistakes although I admit that that's like one of my biggest downfalls I, th <laughs> I thought I was really good at grammar and all of those types of things in like going through high school and all that but um, I either lost it or I never really had it as much as I thought I did <laughs> since then um, speaking of that random life hack okay uh, <laughs> I like you... random life hacks if, if you type, if you like, if you have any kind of like body copy or just any kind of like, you know, any, any kind of writing that you're trying to review, if you copy and paste it into Google Translate, it'll say it back, it'll read it back to you, and you can mm. actually catch mistakes that way. So good, because I know they tell you to read it out loud, and you're like, I don't want to read it out loud. Exactly, yeah, so now you can make Google do it for you. <laughs> That's such a good one. Life hacks. Can make a blog yeah, that's actually about uh, that. that's actually a pretty good point though. I I took I also took business writing, um, but I didn't even think about that. But yeah, I mean, if you have, you know, if you're trying to be professional with people, especially if you're a freelancer and like you know your emails are horrible and your grammar's off and spelling is off, mm -hmm. everything like that, like that automatically sends a bunch of red flags, and they're gonna be like, oh, uh, like you know, do I want to work with someone who like appears to be like unintelligent or right. like illiterate or something like that. So you want to always present yourself in the best light. Yeah. And you sure know, one of the line items on the descriptions for the job description is almost always attention to detail. And so if you can't like remember to capitalize a word or put a period at the end of the sentence or 
um, if you misuse one of the words because English can be confusing. I mean, maybe once is okay, but if you have like more than one in a paper, that could, yeah, that could raise some red flags like you're or, saying. Or especially like a small email. It's just yeah. like, you know, how long does it take to reread that like two or three times to make sure you didn't make any mistakes, you know? It's yeah, just... it's so worth it. It's so worth it. One of the questions was also, uh, how do you, or what classes would you have wanted to take in college or in high school to prepare you? I wrote that I would have wanted to take an entrepreneurship class because, no offense to designers, but they just don't think business-minded a lot. They're very, like, technical, like, I just want to be in an agency, and they don't, like, see all the opportunities out there that there are to either make your own path or to work for a business as a designer. They're just too busy thinking about design and... I just feel like their scope is so limited, so I wish I had spent more time around business-minded people who I felt were in my head, and maybe they would have been just as close-minded, but in my mind, they would have been more open to the possibilities of what you could do with design um, as a business. So I wish I had taken an entrepreneurship class. What about you? What class would you have taken? I know there was classes that I wish they they would have offered, but I'm just trying to think of like what what they were now. Um, I don't know. I'm drawing a blank right now. All right, we'll move past that one. Uh, one thing, one question I thought was interesting is: Is there a shortage of a particular skill among designers, or is there an oversupply of a particular skill? And I had a lot to say about this one. <laughs> <laughs> You know, some stuff that we've already talked about in our conversation, things like uh, self-centered, self-centeredness, I said was an oversupply, how uh, designers are always thinking about themselves and not usually the client. Uh, people who have a lot of design skill, but not a lot of business skill or marketing skill, like you were saying earlier. And then uh, something I kind of took from Andy J. Miller's podcast the creative pep talk is that there's a a shortage of people who are passionately curious about design in general like they're not curious enough to go into and explore all the different aspects there are of design they just kind of maybe you still see this like or that you saw this while you're in class like the teacher will say or the professor will say do this assignment and the students will do it, but they'll never like push the boundaries. And I definitely felt like I saw a lot of that. And I would sit in class thinking, what are these designers around me think that people are just going to like hand them work (laughs) or that they're going to learn by just doing it this one way or I don't know, it just seemed like a lot of them didn't even want to be there, which made me kind of feel good about me because I'm like, I have a better chance. But at the same time, <laughs> I felt felt bad for them. I wanted, I was hoping to be an inspiration to them. Um, to so yeah, the um, <laughs> I know I talked for a long time. Uh, I would, yeah, I, would def- I definitely agree with you. Um, I would say that there's a lot of... I don't, know if I, I, don't, I don't know if I want to use the word like lack of motivation, but like there's there's a lot of like people who put things off until the last minute, even though you were just saying that earlier, <laughs> earlier yeah. yourself. But I mean, like they, I, I mean, I'm yeah, as guilty of this as anybody else, but um, but yeah, we, there's a lot of like lethargic, maybe is the right word, where we're just like, eh, like yeah, I'll, I'll start working on it, and then like, you know, there's no. There's no drive, there's mm-hmm. no, like, mm-hmm. there's no focus on, like, what they want and then yeah. working towards achieving it. So, like, I would say that's definitely um, something that I saw a lot, plenty of um, within our generation graduating and everything. Um, and one thing that is probably not enough of, um, I would say probably... I, I would say, like, people who could, um, like, you knew, I mean, I know it's, the reason why it's very little is because it's just now growing within the industry, but um, there's not a whole lot of focus on, like, um, 
on like app design and stuff and interfacing and other and other things like that, which I guess bringing back to the one that I couldn't answer before, I guess that'd be a cool class to take is like learning how to like how to build the application for a phone because like, yeah. you know, a lot of people want that nowadays mm-hmm. for like, for companies, you know, even like small companies and businesses have like apps now like, Oh, download our app in the app store. And I'm mm-hmm. like, Oh, okay. Like you're a little like mom and pop shop, but all right, cool. You have an application. Like, so like that'd be, um, that'd be a cool class to take. And I feel like it's something that we don't focus on enough as of right now, but I know as time progresses, the, uh, universities will change and they'll start offering more things as soon as it becomes a stronger and bigger trend. Yeah, I think maybe, I don't know if I could see that happening in the future. I know I was talking about this with Andrew because, you know, he's kind of taking over a lot of the decisions in the art department, or at least he's, he has like a higher rank now as a full-time professor. And he was talking about how you could learn a lot of this stuff online. So how is the university going to change with all of these platforms, making it like 10 times cheaper for like any student to learn what they're teaching for free? I mean, yeah, pretty much you can learn almost anything online for free. So it'll be interesting to see if they, uh, how they develop to that. I mean, that's, that's true. But at the same time, like, yeah, I could you know, YouTube it and, you know, go to lynda.com and discover how to, how to make and build like applications and stuff. Like it wouldn't be very hard, but like, I guess the biggest advantage to like having a class about it is that like we learn more than just how to do it. We learn like why they do it. And like what, one of the things about the design classes that they offered was more than just like how to build a logo, but it's like the philosophy of why and like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. what makes a logo a logo, what makes a good logo a good logo, what makes a bad logo a bad logo. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that could be hard to teach on a YouTube video, you know. Yeah. So I feel like, yeah, I mean, I could teach myself right now, you know, if I just spent the next couple of weeks looking at videos, tutorials and stuff on how to build an application, but it doesn't necessarily mean that would give me the tools I need to build a good and successful application versus a bad one. Yeah. Well, and of course, there's always the human component of going to a classroom, being responsible to your work, to your professor, to your classmates that you can't get, or it's a lot harder to feel that impact when you're online. And that's something that we talked about too. One of the last questions they asked us was about social media and how important that is. And while the other panelists were kind of like, well, it's a good networking tool or it's a good place to put your portfolio stuff, I was like, well, yeah, it's also a good community because if you don't have a community, um, if you don't go to school, or if you want to interact with people who you would never be able to see in real life because they live like halfway around the world, social media is indispensable. You need to, you could learn from anybody anywhere and you can comment on people's work that you like and it helps foster that desire so you guys can kind of push each other even though you've never met yeah i mean there definitely is i mean one of the great things about the internet is it or it shrunk the world down away a lot so like uh, we can communicate with, yeah, with people halfway across the world mm-hmm. so i mean there is definitely you know taking online classes like that can be that can work but i still feel like face-to-face interactions within the classroom is still just a little bit more beneficial. Mm-hmm. Um, you you kind of lose things. You can't communicate the same way online, just typing to someone unless you were going to be like Skyping or something like that. You know, just typing, just writing a comment on someone's thing. I mean, you can be a lot more, you can feel free to be a lot more brutally honest because, you mm-hmm. know, you're safe behind your little screen there. But I feel like some things are, can be lost in translation when you're not like there to explain it in person. So I feel mm-hmm. like you still you still lose something, but I feel like it has it, ha- it has helped um, a lot though. Yeah, yeah. There's something about keeping accountable to real people. I I listen to Ninety Nine Percent Invisible with Roman Mars. That's another podcast, and he was talking about credit cards one day and how like before there were credit cards you would have to get a loan from a banker and the accountability there was that you would see that banker and when you would take the money, 
he would know you and you'd have that relationship. You'd make eye contact with that person. You kind of like make a deal like you're going to pay this back, you know, because kind of like I know where you live and I'm, I don't know. But, you know, you have a relationship with that person and you feel more responsible when you look at that person in the eye versus if you just like kind of request a loan on the internet. I don't know if you can even do that, but you know what I mean? Like almost like even when you're using a credit card, it doesn't feel like you're spending money when you use a credit card quite as much as like when you hand over the paper, you're like, whoa, I can count this and this is a lot of money and I'm giving it to you versus like swipe, swipe. And that's why people go into credit card debt. (laughs) Maybe the secret to that is having a credit card with an LCD screen on it with your banker's face on it. And then it's like a little video, like almost like a Harry Potter like credit card and he's gonna be like Whoa. staring you down. And like, and yeah, you know, you know, you have like $400 in debt already. Like you're about to add like 27 more dollars to that. Like, are you sure you wanna use this? Like, come on. <laughs> he's like your conscience. <laughs> That'd be weird. He's just like sitting there, just like a little video of him just sitting there. Yeah. I, mean, I, I would use, but I'd use my credit card less if I had that. I wouldn't, I don't know. I'm not sure I want to see that. <laughs> oh, talking credit cards. That's interesting. Maybe they'll make an app for that. <laughs> yes. I yeah, will with Google that. Wallet or whatever, or the Apple Wallet. Yeah. I, Somehow, I don't, I don't know. I'm trying to, like, imagine that actually happening. I, I just want a little card shaped LCD screen in my wallet. Mm-hmm. I can use to buy stuff with. That would be That's cool. my dream. <laughs> All right. Well, I know that you have to go soon, and we've talked for quite a bit, and I think we have some pretty interesting stuff for people to think about. So thanks, Caleb, for coming on the show, and I hope we can have another conversation in the future. Uh, yeah, anytime you want to have me back, just let me know. Uh, I'll be more than happy to entertain your uh your many followers oh yes nice. <laughs> so yes maybe we'll do a follow-up when we're like not so emerging designers anymore <laughs> when, when we're, when we're like intermediate things. level or whatever you call them between it's way too long though i might be too big and then you won't be able to afford me anymore oh shoot i'll have to pay <laughs> you all right well have a good day you too I hope you enjoyed this week's show. If you have any questions or comments about the show, please go to facebook.com slash creative calling podcast. You can also get all of the episodes on creative calling podcast.com. And if you would like the most recent episodes, you still have to go to SoundCloud until I finish catching up everything on iTunes. And if you haven't heard everything on iTunes, maybe just go back and check them all out. And maybe if you love them, give them a review. I'd love that. Please share the show if you love it. And with that, until next time.